Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Is that uh, is that loud? okay? That's good enough. Well, as, as the traffic gets louder, if we need to bump it up, just just let us know. We can bump it up a little bit. Um, at this time, uh, uh, just for uh, purposes, uh, Billy needs to take down the names of things. You don't need to write it if you feel uncomfortable grabbing the pen and writing it. Billy can write it for you. Um, but uh, he's going to come up during the first hymn, <clears throat> and he's going to come around here. And if you did, have not signed up, uh, as Billy comes by, raise your hand so he can write your, your name down and stuff. So he's going to be back here and during the first hymn. So just raise your hand, and then he can write your name down and stuff for you. So, um, and then also we want to, uh, we want to let everybody know Next week, we are doing a combined uh, outdoor worship service with the First Baptist Church, uh, our neighbors. And so if we will not be meeting here in this parking lot. We're going to be meeting in the parking lot right behind the education building. So that's where we, uh, Stuart and I went around and looked, and that's where the most shade is uh, at 9 o'clock in the morning. So... Uh, but we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to have a combined service. Uh, and so next week you can park here and go down or you can park uh, over right behind the Baptist Church or you can park on our, our strip here. But the uh, middle strip in between there, will be, we will block off like we do this for the people to be able to sit. So be sure to bring your chairs. Uh, we'll do the same thing. Everyone will bring their chairs and and sit and stuff. Uh, we'll just be with uh, the Baptist next week. So, uh, tell your tell if you know somebody else that has usually has come uh, to let them know so that when they come, if they see the uh, parking lot empty or with cars in it, they will won't think that we're not having a service next week. We'll just be having it in a different place. So. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I think that was all the announcements we needed to make. Um, at this time, uh, as Billy is going around, uh, we will sing our hymn. Remember, to, if you sing, to put your mask on. If you don't sing, if you just hum, you don't need to. But put your mask on if you sing. Uh, and then sing to yourself. Don't sing like you're a soloist. <clears throat> but but sing as as you would as singing to yourself. So let us sing, uh, and if you would like to stand uh, during America, I would encourage you to do that. So uh, let's stand as we sing America. <laughs>
I hope everyone had a wonderful July 4th. Uh, hopefully uh, you saw some of the fireworks or heard them all around you. They were saying, I saw an article a few days ago before the 4th even, that they had already sold three times as much uh, personal fireworks this year than they have in, in, their, in recent years. Just because everybody knew the communities were not having their big fireworks thing, so all the, the individuals did that. And I was telling a couple of the guys this morning as we were setting up, it reminded me of when I was little, because remember way back, uh, you could look down, everyone did their fireworks in their driveways back then. And you could look down the road, down the line in a, in a neighborhood and everyone would be out in their driveways all shooting off. And every, of course, everybody had to try to have the largest or highest or tallest <laughs> rockets go off. Uh, but that was always an exciting time to, to be there. And I remember, they, we don't see those a lot anymore, at least I don't see those little sparklers. Remember the sparklers and stuff? Boy, we'd, we'd wave those sparklers. We thought we were something <laughs> when we were little waving those sparklers. But uh, I hope you had a good fourth. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope God blessed you in a wonderful, mighty way. Uh, we live in a great country. Uh, you know, it's not perfect. Uh, uh, but we live in a, in a great country, and um, I tell you what, it's, it, it's a blessing and, uh, to be a part of this wonderful uh, place, this wonderful community, this wonderful church, this wonderful nation. So uh, I, I appreciate you all being here as well. At this time, we are going to have a, a prayer. Uh, so let us bow for a word of prayer. Gracious God, we thank you so much for your many blessings. We thank you that you have blessed us as communities, that you have blessed us with your presence, that you have blessed us with your love and joy and forgiveness in our hearts and lives. Lord, you have blessed us in so many ways. You have blessed us this morning that here we are and uh, on this beautiful morning and we are able to gather together and, and to experience you and your presence. Lord, I thank you for that. I thank you for allowing us to, to know you, to experience you. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would bless us now. Uh, we just thank you so much for all that you have done. We know, Lord, that there are people that are hurting and we know that there are some that are uh, sick, and whether it's with COVID-19 or other issues, it could be cancer, or it could be many things. But Lord, we know that you are a God who heals. And Lord, we just pray that you would bring healing um, to the bodies, to those who, who need healing. We pray that you would bring comfort to those who are caring for those people. And, and just a peace in their hearts and spirits that you are present for them. <clears throat> and Lord, we just pray that you would uh, help each of us to realize your presence in our hearts and lives and that we know that we can face anything. We can face anything because you are with us. And for that, we say thank you. And now as the people of God, we come together and pray as you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Oh, <clears throat> At this time, uh, as you know, the basket is over here. Uh, if you have not dropped your offering in, we're not going to be passing it around, but there is a basket over here that you can put your offering in. The counters are here, and they will uh, go over and, and count uh, uh, the money that's uh, in the basket, but also the money that people have mailed in during the week. Uh, we want to thank you. You all have been so wonderful, so faithful, so giving. 
Um, during this time, even though we've not been able to be together, you all have stepped up and you have been so faithful in giving. We thank you for that. Um, and I, I just am amazed and, and, and just ex excited about the fact that uh, God works through us uh, in so many ways, in generosity, in faithfulness, and I, I just want to thank you all for continuing to give in such wonderful, marvelous ways. So we just praise God for that. <coughs> Did we have a thing left? Okay. Um, and now, at this time, uh, Charlie is going to bless us with a fourth. Uh, Kind of our patriotic, patriotic, uh, special music. The scripture reading this morning comes to us from the book of Isaiah, the 61st uh, chapter, and we'll be starting with verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good, new good news to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to the, and the opening of the prisons to those who are bound to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor 
and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you so much for your many blessings. We thank you for all that you have done for us. Lord, we thank you for this holiday and just pray that we would be able to enjoy it with with loved ones, with family, with friends. Uh, Lord, may this be a, a, a weekend full of blessings for each of us. And Lord, we just know that as we experience you and your word, that we will be blessed this morning. And we thank you for that. For it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. In this passage... As you can tell, I'm not used to having a little a wire to, to, to step around. In this passage, uh, Isaiah is uh, setting the scene for the Messiah. And he's uh, setting the scene for uh, that God had given him a message. Uh, but it was also a, a message for that was uh, would, would be experienced not only by the people at that day, but also for people in the time to come uh, when Jesus was coming and it was a forerunner of the Messiah, this passage is. And so, in, which gives us a truth that uh, God's word is not just for the time and place of those people. Oftentimes people say, well, why are we, uh, you know, reading the Bible? Why, you know, that was written for a time and a people a long time ago. And yet we have seen and we see throughout scripture that it is, it is a timeless uh, piece and it is, is written for more than just the time of the people that were there at the moment that it was written. Here in Isaiah's day, it was written for the time for the Isaiah's people at, at that point, but it was also uh, written for the, the people during Jesus's day. And it was written for us in our day. This is a, a scripture that we can all experience and be a part of because you see God's truths are eternal. God, what, uh, the things that God has done uh, uh, for people is not just for uh, people in one age or one generation, but it's for all of God's creation, all of his people that he has created. And so let's look at this passage just a little bit because as we think of the fourth, as we think of freedom uh, that we have as a people, uh, let's look at this. It says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. One of the things I think we want to look at and that we wonder about is what kind of liberty would Isaiah be bringing to his people? And what kind of liberty would that then translate over when Jesus came? And what kind of liberty does Jesus give to the people of his day, but also to us that are sitting here today? Well, Isaiah goes on to explain what he means by uh, that God is going to bring liberty to the people of God. And he, and he did this by saying... Uh, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn. And then he says these three things that tell us, that give specifics to what he means by, I'm going to give you freedom. I'm going to give you liberty. He says, to give them a garland instead of ashes. One of the things that God frees us up of is the fear of death. Because you see, a garland is a, uh, it's, it's a, a, a made of plants and flowers and, you know, it's, it's things that is lively, it's, it, it creates life. 
kind of what we experienced uh, in our day and age now is during Christmas when you hang a when we hang the the wreaths. Uh, the wreaths is sort of like a garland. It's, it, it reminds us of life. It reminds us of eternal life. Uh, and so the wreath or, or a garland reminds us that we have life, that we are living. Ashes, of course, remind us of death. Ashes are, are you, know, you know, remind us that uh, uh, we, we are going to one day die. But what he, uh, Isaiah is telling his people and what Jesus tells us later, he says to give them a garland instead of ashes. In other words, life instead of death. That's what God promises. He promises life instead of death. We don't have to fear that. We, we have the freedom to be able to live. Sometimes, you know, we, we are so afraid and, and stuff we don't wind up living we're not living our lives the way that we could be and God wants you to live a joyful abundant life you know Jesus said in John 10 10 I've come that you might have life and that that life abundantly he wants us to live our lives and to live in an abundance of joy and happiness not with, with freedom from fear of death I bring you garlands instead of ashes I hope and pray this July 4th that you will realize that God loves you so much that he doesn't want you to live in fear. He wants you to live in the joy of the life that we can have uh, together as a people of God. And then Isaiah went on. The next uh, thing is the oil of gladness instead of mourning. Now, we all mourn at times. We have all been touched by death. We have all experienced uh, the ashes of life. Every one of us has a loved one that has passed on. Uh, every one of us has experienced either a friend or a family member who has, uh, who has died and, and we mourn for them. Uh, we have all been touched by that mourning. But yet what God promises is the freedom that the, that mourning doesn't have to define us. Now, I have known some people that just can't get over uh, their, their spouse dies or someone very close to them, maybe a, a, a mother or a father who dies that they were very, very close to, and they just cannot get over that. It affects them. It affects their families. I have known uh, some people that uh, it affects them so much that uh, one, one lady, uh, when her... Uh, uh, when her father passed, uh, she was so affected that it wound up causing conflict with uh, her, her husband and her family because she, she just couldn't get over it. She was so depressed and so discouraged and so down that she could just never get over it. She wound up winding up getting divorced and her children just, you know, did not come around to see her because she just couldn't get right. The mourning defined who she was. Brothers and sisters, we all mourn. We all experience pain and suffering. We all hurt. We all have broken hearts at times. But let us uh, realize that God does not want us to be defined by that pain. He does not want us to be defined by that mourning. What he offers is the oil of gladness. That's what God offers us. His freedom is an oil of gladness. It's, it's an ability to look beyond the morning, look beyond the things of a broken heart, and realize that there is gladness that we can experience in God's presence in our lives. That's the freedom that he's talking about. We have the freedom to choose the gladness over the morning. And then the third one is the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. What Isaiah is sharing here and what Jesus shared later is the fact that we have a choice. We have the freedom to either praise God or to, in, 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 in weakness and in faintness of heart, to, to uh, be troubled and to not believe. Uh, to have a lack of faith, uh, 
and sometimes that causes that happens when we wind up uh, experiencing a broken heart or or mourning of some type. What it causes us is it binds us. It it chains us to to those feelings that we have, and it's it's uh, it binds us to the feelings of of a lack of faith and a faintness of heart a faintness of spirit that we're just not strong enough and we think I just I'm not strong enough to handle this I'm not strong enough to experience this or go through this but what God does is he gives us the ability and the freedom the liberty to get beyond the the faintness of spirit the faintness of heart the lack of faith he enables us to get beyond that to, uh, to uh, a mantle of praise that once again that we can experience uh, the fact that we can believe in God, have faith in God, and praise God for all that he has done in our hearts and lives. Now, I don't know about you, but in a lot of ways, these are choices that we can make. We can either choose uh, to be, uh, uh, choose to be in fearful of death like the ashes, we can choose to be in a time of mourning uh, that will define us of who we are. We can choose to be in a lack of faith, a faint heart, a faint spirit, uh, and, and a lack of faith. We can choose to live that way. Or, as God shares with us, we can choose a garland of life. We can choose life over death. We can choose to live in the, uh, in the gladness that God can put in our hearts, a happy spirit. <clears throat> that doesn't mean we have to be happy about what is happening, but it can mean that we have a, uh, a happiness and a joy that is deep down in our hearts and spirits that can't be controlled by uh, the things of life. <coughs> and then also uh, that we can choose to praise God and to think of the good things that God has done in our lives and not choose to dwell on the, the negative things that has happened to us or those that we love. And then, and then Isaiah says, they shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities and the devastations in many generations. In other words, what Isaiah is telling us and what Jesus has also told us with God, nothing is settled forever. No pain, no mourning, time of mourning, no disaster, nothing is going to last forever. Although there may be times that we think it will be that way. I'm sure in, in, uh, in Europe during World War II, they thought the devastation of that war would probably last forever. They thought these cities that were bombed and completely wiped out probably thought those cities would never be rebuilt. Now you can go over, whether it's in Germany or in Poland or wherever, a lot of those cities that had been completely destroyed have been rebuilt. The same is true of our hearts and our minds and our spirits. There is nothing, nothing that can destroy your heart and life to an extent it cannot be rebuilt. There is nothing that can happen to you. There is nothing that Satan can do. There is nothing this world can do. There is nothing that, that can happen that our hearts and lives cannot be rebuilt. And that's the promise of God, that the, the ruins of our life can be rebuilt and, and made strong again and beautiful again. I hope that you will realize that no matter what we face, whether it's COVID-19, whether it's uh, <clears throat> protests and, and looting and, and, and rioting or whatever may be happening in our country, I hope that you will know that there is nothing that will last forever and that God can help us to rebuild our hearts, rebuild our lives, rebuild our communities, uh, a lot of these places that have been burned down will be rebuilt. There is nothing, nothing that God cannot rebuild in our hearts, in our lives, and in our communities. 
And I hope that we can know that. And, and that's the freedom. That's the freedom is to not dwell on the negative, not to dwell on the, the things that have happened, but dwell on the fact that God loves us, He cares for us, and He is there to help us rebuild our hearts, rebuild our lives, and rebuild it in a better way. And I believe God can do that. I believe God can rebuild uh, you know, us and our hearts and our lives in a better way than they were before. You've heard the phrase, what doesn't kill us will make us stronger. <laughs> In a lot of ways, that is so true. We will become better going through the fires and challenges of life. Going through those difficult times will make us stronger. It will make us better. We will be better. That's a promise of God. We, what won't kill us, will make us stronger and better. And that's the truth of God. And I, and I hope that we will know and experience that as a people of God. Yes, we're having to be out here in a parking lot in the hot sun. You all don't even have to face the hot sun. Huh? <laughs> but we're out here in the, in the hot sun and stuff. But praise God, one day we won't be. One day we won't be. God can rebuild our hearts, our lives, our minds, our spirits. And they will be better and stronger than ever. I believe that. I hope you do as well. And I hope you that you will, can know that we can have a wonderful, joyful July 4th. And the, the 4th of the weekend. Because God is present for us. As a church. As individuals. And as a people. Amen. At this time... Um, we're going to sing for the healing of the nations. Once again, if you sing, um, you know, put on your mask and uh, or you can just hum along. Uh, but let's say it, stand as we do uh, for the healing of the nations. Praise God from whom all blessings flow as we remain standing. Uh, I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for coming. You have been such a blessing. As I put in last week's, it's great to see uh, all ages here. It's great to see from, uh, from Lillian and Rachel, the little ones, to Gabe and, and Michael as with youth. And it's great to see the older ones uh, it, it, with Fred and and Ardell and so many of the older ones. It's, and it's good to have visitors. We have Tanja's uh, parents with us today. Um, 
and so we we rejoice with that. Um, what a wonderful blessing that you have been to me. You have blessed me by coming out and being outside in a parking lot with a sunny day, you know, and, and come out. You have been a blessing, and I hope that you know that you are a blessing to the person you are beside. Just by your presence here, you are a blessing to others. God is using you today in a wonderful way. So let us now, as we do our sung benediction, America the Beautiful, let us sing and then uh, depart in God's peace. 